All right, lads, welcome back to a, another Dauntless video. My name is Average T, aka Average, or just T as most people call me. Today, I've got you five Dauntless Reforged tips. Um, this isn't just for just Dauntless Reforged in general, it's for the new player. Uh, if you are an endgame player, I'm sure a couple of these tips will be useful for you, but I'm sure most of you guys will know these if you are endgame to mid players. But regardless, if you are new, brand new to the game, I would recommend you stay in for the whole video because there's a couple of additional tips as well at the end, um, which you probably don't know about as well. Um, but without further ado, I will put you through to the first tip. Thank you very much for clicking and enjoy the rest of the video. Tip number one, make sure you are interrupting, aka booping behemoths. Every behemoth has different tells for booping. As you can sit, uh, tell with Strike, he gives you the nice indication when he's flying towards you. Most behemoth boots indicate, uh, are indicated by orangey red lines around its head, showing it is, uh, their move is interruptible, allowing you to put them on the floor and get a nice window for damage. Here's another example. Nice indication above its head. Get the boot, allowing us to follow up with his stagger and finish off the strike. Here's an example of a baiting Pangar's boop. He will always give you the boop at the beginning if you do this. Allowing you to get a nice interrupt right at the beginning of the fight. So much downtime for overpower as well, which is another cell I'm going to talk to you about in just a moment for tip number two. Scrape can be baited by making sure he does the icy winds at the beginning. He will always go into the sky uh, indicating a boop. And there we have it, on the floor for easy damage. Moving on for the discussion from Boopin Behemoths, we have the second tip, which is make sure you have overpower within your builds. I literally have this cell in almost every single one of my builds, apart from my farming materials build. This is why it, this is because it is incredibly strong. As you can see the definition here, is a plus 10 all the way up to plus 60 percent of damage versus staggered behemoths the thing is a lot of people don't understand it's not just when the behemoth is staggered but also when you get a boop when you get a part break these are also states which allows overpower to proc and um, there is a there is a site of overpower power when it is proc so your the behemoth will be caught on fire don't distinguish this from it being in rage because it is a different animation and it also is different color i will show you a well, a couple of examples of overpower state in a moment um, but also just to be weary that overpower doesn't always cause an animation but just when you just remember when you do boop the behemoth when you do stagger it and when you do part break it you will proc overpower giving this benefit of this bonus damage i do recommend having it at plus six but obviously i understand if you're at early game you probably won't have it at plus six try your best try and get it to do as high as you possibly can um, if you don't have any overpower cells and you're looking, um, it does come in Tordogoro's arms and that will give you a plus three overpower when you power surge it. But yes, I understand Tordogoro is not beginning game, but I'm just going to let you know that's where you can get overpower in a, in a cell slot. Also, if you haven't got it and you are obviously brand new to the game, come to the middleman. These cells rotate um, every few days. Sometimes you have an overpower cell. If you've got some, if you've got some chips here, try and buy the overpower because it is, trust me, it's worth it. That does move on to my uh, additional tip as well. Uh, make sure you are crafting from the middleman to make sure you have plus three of every single cell. It does take a while, but when you do eventually get plus three of every cell, that will be able to, that will allow you to make any build you well you want in the game. To do this, you need to go over here. You get a plus two cell, which you want, you just times two plus ones. So for example, here's two plus one cells. I'm going to fuse it for you. Speed it up with ace chips. Collect it. And that will give you plus two. And if you want a plus two, it's exactly the same thing. You go up. You do your plus two. Use two of the same plus twos. I'll speed it up just to show you guys real quickly. And that will allow you to get... A, a plus three cell. This work with this works with all cells. I wouldn't recommend doing a plus two to plus one because it goes. It comes down to an RNG factor, and you might not get the uh, 
plus three cell, you might just get another plus two. Here's just a couple of examples of why overpower is so important. And also just a couple of examples of the overpower proc animation as well. Here's the boot from earlier on. Scrave's health is a full, by the way. Three quarters health already. Animation's not showing at the moment. It's already down to a quarter HP. And there's the animation from overpower. I know it's really difficult, but it doesn't always show. I will show you another couple of examples of the animation. Quill shot's just about to be staggered. We stagger him and there's the overpower proc animation. Here you go, Stormclaw just gets staggered. Another overpower animation coming through there. Uh, tip number three is a real, real simple one. Focus on power surgeon weapons over power surgeon armor. Yes, I know you want to sell slots, but I would recommend you getting your power up first. Because beating, uh, defeating behemoths quicker will obviously lead to you killing them quicker, getting XP quicker, allowing you to get ether hearts quicker, refores quicker, everything quicker. So I would recommend power surgeon first and then power surgeon your armor pieces. If you really, really can't wait and you want to get that plus three cell slot, go for the power surge um, of the armor. But honestly, plus two is perfectly fine when you're um, low rank. Uh, when you do reach the end game and you'll start fighting trials to get your first discipline cell, then I'd recommend power surge and armor pieces. But regardless, I would recommend power surge and your weapons first over your armor when you are beginning. Moving on to tip number four, and that is crafting the correct armor pieces at the right time in your game progression. Obviously, starting off at your beginning game stage, uh, a nice, nice helmet choice would be a Drask helmet, allowing you to have that Uther attainment passive, which is your lantern charge uh, from attacks, and it gives you a nice power cell socket as well. Uh, when you start fighting Pangar, I'd recommend getting the Pangar helmet if you wish because it gives you that nice passive of stagger damage and a power socket to go with also. A nice recommendation as well and a bonus would be definitely going for the Hellion helmet. It gives you a great passive of Rage Hunter, giving you bonus damage when the Behemoths are enraged. Also, it gives you a nice technique cell slot when you are beginning when you are in your beginning game. Uh, it's quite hard to come across technique cells within your build. so. A very good uh, choice if you are going for a technique cell slot. Moving on to chest piece, we have obviously, I definitely would recommend going with the Nasha Cloak. This is the only defense I'd recommend putting into your, into your builds at early game. Only because Iceborne is kind of not needed because you won't be running your low life builds at early game. Also, it gives you a tough passive and it allows you for another defense cell, which I'd recommend putting tough in as well. Another good choice would be your Drask chest piece giving you that Uther attainment passive for your lantern charge from attacks and another power socket a nice honorable mention would be karabak chest giving you that part damage buff from blade storm and a nice rare technique cell slot to go with and when you do re uh, reach your mid game ish i would recommend crafting the boris chest piece and um, for your aka iceborne builds it has your defense cell slot for your iceborne and your rage passive for the half life builds moving on to the arms uh number one choice for uh new get new players mid players would be uh nasha arms giving you that rage hunter passive for one behemoth of enrage and that nice power socket i definitely definitely would recommend you crafting the boreas arms as well for when you get to uh, mid game as well as really mentioned this is going to be another a piece for your iceborne builds because that'll be your one of your meta build setups a nice honorable mention uh, also would be the karabak arm karabak arms nope i apologize the drask arms they're easy to craft as i already mentioned before if you haven't got any utility within your build just go with the drask arms giving you that part damage from sharpened which is better than blade storm by the way and that nice utility cell slot as i already mentioned Moving on finally to the feet of the builds, I definitely would recommend you crafting the, where are they, the Nasha legs if you haven't got any tough in your build already. It will allow you to get that tough into your build. Also a nice power socket to go with. Also Karak feet aren't too bad. It gives you a nice conditioning 
increasing your stamina regeneration, especially really, really good for your um, hammer builds and your axe builds. Also, if you just use your stamina too much and you're still getting used to the game, it's a nice way to ease yourself into stamina consumption. And also it comes with a nice power socket to go with. I also would recommend crafting the Charog feet and the Boreas feet. These two will be your meta feet near the end game. Uh, especially your Boreas feet. This will come into play for your Iceborne builds as well. Moving on to the fifth and final tip. And that is making sure you're focusing on nodes within the Slayer's Path. Which correlate to the way you play. By this I mean if you're maining Chain Blades. Make sure you're upgrading the node tree of Chain Blades. It will allow you to get more damage. More critical strike, uh, strike chance. Jesus Christ my voice just cracks. Um, obviously this will allow you to defeat Behemoths a lot more quicker. And there's no point in upgrading the sword if you never use it. Obviously upgrade that whenever, right at the end when you when you start using it. But if you are focusing on a particular weapon choice, just upgrade that first. Another thing I'd, I'd recommend upgrading as well would be getting one of these. Allowing you to carry more healing flasks. If you want more, obviously upgrade more. I haven't, but if you do find yourself dying, just upgrade this. Allowing you to have more healing potions. Another one I'd recommend upgrading as well would be... Uh, this part of the tree this is quite a nice piece obviously stamina max uh, max stamina regeneration stamina bonus health bonus and then obviously increased healing from all sources that's a really nice choice to upgrade just just realize um each upgrade requires a different amount of merits and there is two types of merits one being combat one being explorational uh the explorational would be your like gliders etc your potions uh, all of these ones and then your combat one your combat focus merits would be these ones your like weapon choices your resistance etc etc basically what i'm saying is focus on the slayer's path to tailor the way you play the game don't listen to anyone else just make sure you are focused on, on the stuff which you use just a couple of additional tips before we go uh, make sure you are coming down here every single day when you log into the game Collect your coin. I've already collected it. Go over to, to the cell uh, opener over here. Scroll across and there will be a, a daily call for you to open. This will give you rams, sometimes a bounty, other stuff, uh, potions. Just make sure you're doing it every single day. It's free items. It just allows, allows you to progress through the game a lot easier. And to stack some of the stuff which you probably wouldn't have stacked up otherwise. Another bonus tip would be to uh reforge certain things to get you the most benefits um right currently now in terms of like damage and dps all of that business i definitely would focus on reforging the axe first because it will give you the plus up to plus five damage for all weapons second best would be strikers it goes to um additional of a plus five attack speed for all weapons and finally um if you, if if you're going in regards to tier lists i'd recommend going for the hammer for your third choice because this gives you a total of a plus 15 increased dagger damage for all weapons so that's my uh rundown of that i hope you guys enjoyed the video i'd appreciate it if you left it a, li a like subscribe if you're new all of that business it's a little bit different and um, if you do like this video i will do similar stuff in the future for end game players but if not i won't <laughs> thank you very much again and peace i'll see you guys in the next video